up and welcome back to another episode of The Movie Newbie. I'm your host, Rilis Hemi, and we are talking about AI, Artificial Intelligence, by Steven Spielberg, but could have been Stanley Kubrick. And joining me, as usual, are Raf and Ollie, and this time, again, we're doing it in the digital space <laughs> of the internet. How are you guys doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm, Ollie, how, I'm how good. I'm good. Um, it feels weird not being in the same room as you guys while doing this. I kind of missed the green room and Mr. Briel's home studio. Um, but, but yeah, good. How are you guys? How's Raf? He's uh, he's struggling less uh, with technically, which is nice. So we have Ollie back. We can see him. We can feel him. And he's got a beautiful smile. <laughs> he's naked as well, which is weird. We told him to put clothes on. You can't he tame the beast. To. So he's doing... He's doing... Well, I wouldn't call that the beast, but um, uh. I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> rustling your feathers. All right, no, good as well, good as well. Nice to see, uh, well, nice to see everyone, despite it being remotely. Yeah, nice nice to see you too. There's a bit of traffic outside. I hope no one can hear it. Oh, I can hear the, the, the honking, which is yeah. a first. Yeah, the honking is, is pretty bad today. People are people are pissed. Yeah. Jabril lives, uh, his address is uh, specifically <laughs> in full detail No. But he does live next to a high street, so that's why you might hear some noise here and there. Yeah, but anyways, let's let's get into this film and talk about your initial thoughts. Um, yeah, what are your initial thoughts for artificial intelligence? Um, I, I'm I'm gonna go first on this one. Um, I remember, I think this is probably the second time I've ever seen this. The first time being when I was a child, and. Uh, I'm really surprised, like, how much I remember. Like, I Mm. didn't remember the subject at all or, like, the plot or whatever. But I did get, like, these nostalgic, like, um, I don't know, deja vu moments where I'm like, oh, I remember that scene. I remember, like, watching this bit and that bit. And I'm like, oh, that, uh, the bedroom, you know, or the scene where he tries to eat the spinach for the first time or you know there's a bunch of different things that happens and i'm like oh that's so weird um so i really enjoyed watching this film um it was really trippy for a 2000s film of this sort i don't know it was it was it was really interesting to watch and then to see you know jude law super young um to see uh what's his name uh Six Senses Kid. I can never remember his name. Um, Haley Joel Osment. Yes. Um, yeah. Just, it was a nice watch. Nice, good watch. And I'm glad I picked this film. <laughs> yeah. mm. Very long, though. That's definitely have to say. <laughs> yeah, definitely fucking long. Yeah. It's a, it's a classic, I think, Steven Spielberg length. He usually likes the two hours and a half. He usually likes to cap yeah. it off at that, at that time. Um, but... To piggyback your kind of nostalgic feeling, I felt the exact same way when I rewatched this film. So this is, I've watched this film now like around four times, I think. But having watched it from when I was, maybe maybe we're around the same age, and then watching it again, it, uh, you know, many years later, like almost a decade later or 15 years later, those same kind of feelings came rushing back. I was like, oh my God, I remember this scene. It's like as if maybe we watched it during like these formative years or maybe it's the power of Spielberg just like imprinting yeah. his cinematic, you know, scenes onto us that we're like, oh my God, I remember this scene so vividly. Because every time I do watch this film, that's kind of, I get that. I get that kind of nostalgic, childlike sense of self with this movie, um, which is odd. And so, I don't know, uh, There's it's puzzling because it's 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 also how movies work you you, te- you tend to can you can you can draw back from a lot of experiences from your past um and this movie definitely has that and it's not my favorite spielberg um Mm-mm. it's not it's i don't think it's his most seamless or his best work yet it still holds this like chilling bleakness and almost upon this rewatch at least i felt the horror at the beginning even with john williams score i felt like it was a lot scarier than I than my previous watches, um, 
just the way David, it's funny that he's called David mm-hmm. as well, you know, um, since Hal called David uh, from 2001 Space Odyssey. But it's, yeah, I, I found it, I found it really quite, I had a lot of horror elements this time around. Um, and the ending still kind of hits like a sucker punch a little bit. Uh, and I still remember it very clearly, but yeah, it's not his most seamless, but it's still such enigmatic and memorable work, which is so perplexing because it it is not my favorite yet. It still holds as something so Mm. nostalgic. Yeah. Um, I have complicated feelings about this movie. So I, I, I too, just for context, I, I um I also like you two. I think I watched it when I was young. We're, we're we're pretty much the same age. And I remember I was on a trip to L.A. with my family for a Christmas holiday, and I remember seeing the poster for this film. This would have been like two thousand and one, and I I feel like I that that poster is is etched in my brain forever. Um, and I saw it when it came out. Mm. I think I what we had we maybe brought it home on DVD one day, and this movie really fucked me up as a kid actually like i have vivid memories of being pretty devastated by this film because i mean there are a lot of things that are upsetting about watching it now but i think watching it as a child yourself and seeing that's those scenes of him being Mm. abandoned as a child or him having that rivalry with his brother or sort of yearning for his mother's attention and not Mm. getting it or or the, the fear of being left on your own i think all of that is there and it's and you know, credit to the film. I think it's it's conveyed really powerfully. Um, but yeah, it, it it kind of haunted me as a youngin, and I think that's the reason why I haven't revisited this as an adult. This is the first time I've seen this film in probably close to two decades, and for some whatever reason, I didn't think that this was one of Spielberg's better films. I didn't have it ranked in my head as such. And now that I've seen it again, I have to say I I probably still agree with that assessment. I think this is a weird, weird ass movie. This is so strange. This is what a what a dark, what a dark. This is a weird movie, up, man. Film. This is really unlike the sort of films that Spielberg makes. So it's, weird. It, it's funny because it exhibits some of his best tendencies as a filmmaker. I think it's got some of the most interesting things he's ever dealt with on screen, but it also has some of his worst tendencies as a filmmaker on display. Um, like I said, I think there's a lot of really interesting concepts in there. Um, I really love the, the, the Pinocchio parallels. Um, like I said before, I really love the sort of dynamic it explores between a mother and their child. I like that this is an exploration of artificial intelligence that isn't about super intelligence. I think a lot of the other, you know, um, like how, for example, mm. he's quintessentially yep. super intelligent. Um, but David is, is actually frozen as a child, so he never acquires... He never has the intelligence higher than that of a of a 10-year-old, I guess. And it's more about like the concept of can we recreate human love and bonding, but in a robot. I think that's fascinating. But then mm. there are so many parts of this movie where I was like, what is what are you doing? What is going on? I mean, we can get to it a little bit later on, but the like I feel like why does Spielberg have to literalize everything? I feel like the ending could have been so perfect. Mm if Spielberg just hadn't gone three or four steps too, too far ahead. Yeah. Um, I, I have so many thoughts on that ending yeah, actually, yeah. but I, I don't want to bog it down just in this section. Maybe we can get to it a little bit yeah. later. Um, so yeah, very mixed feelings on this one, have to, but I will say yeah. this, uh, Haley Joel Osment is phenomenal in this film. Um, and he, his performance yeah, is also, yeah, is yeah. almost worth it alone. I would say. Um, but yeah, interesting film. I will say that yeah. very interesting. Yeah. And despite our mixed feelings, I think impactful is still a word that we could use because it did, it does have an impact both on our psyche, on our nostalgic, uh, you know, on, on our, in our youth Mm. and and now. So it talks to the maybe longevity or the um, tangibleness of this film that it just has this like weird impact, whatever, whatever it may be, it, it still kind of has a hold over you in a weird way way yeah, yeah. you know i think i think the one the one dubious thing that i have with this film and i think we we you briefly mentioned it both of you like it, it's uneven it tries to maybe be two different things because at once it tries to honor maybe kubrick's you know kind of bleak storytelling about 
uh, AI and about the future. But then it also shares like Steven Spielberg's like, you know, warm hearted, optimistic kind of like sense sure. of na- like narrative in, in a way. So I think that just yeah. that in that way, you're like, wait, what am I? Am I watching this film or am I watching this film? And then for me, what kind of the undercurrent is John Williams score, which also kind of is weirdly unbalanced because you're getting like you're getting both. You're getting the Steven Spielberg optimism and then the something a little bit darker. So maybe this film doesn't really choose what it wants to be. It doesn't really have, it has two identities. Yeah, no, absolutely. I would agree. I think um, there's been a lot yeah. of debate about which part of these, which parts of this film are specifically Kubrick's and which parts are Spielberg's. But I agree that whatever that, whoever claims yeah. what the synthesis doesn't quite come together. And also John Williams score. I find it, I find this with a lot of yeah. like yeah. films from the nineties and early two thousands. Like the score is just way too, ever present like it's just always there in the background kind of telling you how to feel at any moment yeah 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 that orchestral kind of like that's classic spielberg though i feel like i mean again let's save it to the armchair these are all armchair moments um yeah 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 let's skip let's skip to the favorite scene and then we'll 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 hash it down in the armchair yeah um so who who wants to go first with their favorite scene go for it all right <laughs> you know there's, there's i so don't have one just like really when you call up when the teacher calls and the kid <laughs> to, 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 to say something about the book they were meant to read over the weekend <laughs> 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 <You're> like, <laughs> <laughs> i really liked the bit about the mice um, and the men uh, we're of mice and men <laughs> I, no, I totally read it. I promise I read it. I swear. Uh, no, I, I read s- it. I swear the, the mice ate the men, right? <laughs> um, no, no, no. Uh, there were there were loads of really good bits. Like I really liked every time uh, David goes into like self discovery kind of mode, where he kind of understands mm. what's going on, or like because there's definitely moments in the movie where he doesn't understand what's going on and then he kind of comes to the realization and that kind of brings him forward but i would say the only reason why i'm picking this scene that i'm going to talk about is because it was the most memorable scene and it was the scene that whenever i thought about this movie i thought of that scene and it was the one with i'm guessing it was it robin williams oh yeah Um, when they go into that like doctor who uh not doctor who doctor something like emporium where the doctor no yeah um and i and i just really loved that scene because it i don't know it just brought me back to being a kid it was really weird but it was also funny like um the interactions between like being literal and not and it's just like such a um childlike moment i don't know how Mm. to explain it it's like when you're a kid and you're starting to realize that Mm. you're learning things. Mm. Although isn't Dr. No just basically Google. I don't (laughs) quite understand what, what was so distinct about this technology. Yeah. 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 Otherworldly. You basically, you ask it questions and it tells you the answers, but that's like a search. Yeah, no, but I, yeah. But like for the, for like from the point of view of David, as like someone who doesn't know anything like that, like to him, it's like but some it's just sort like, of like magical we're like in a few uh, thing. Fuck it, oh Ollie, <laughs> Ollie like, was like, yeah, Ollie, take your Ollie straight up, <laughs> fuck that yeah. shit. <laughs> Ollie's straight up shitting well, on Doctor No. Like, He's like, yo, this is fuck Doctor No. We <laughs> have like mechas, You're bit- <laughs> flying cars. Yet you have to pay to like basically use Google. <laughs> 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 I mean, you make a good point. It's literally yeah, there's a there's a literally point. a kid robot with like yeah, and yet high like, intelligence. You know, if you pay this amount of money, yet, you get six yeah. questions answered. Well, you never know. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, yo, it, motherfucker, go on a computer back then. Come on. <laughs> well, fuck you then. <laughs> oh, sorry, go on, Jabril. <laughs> but. <laughs> No, you were talking about what the um, say, no. you know the experience of <laughs> discovering things as a child. <laughs> uh, 
that's one way to just dump on his. Life. Yeah, no, just like I, Jabril I'm is like, done. you know, like this childlike quality. Yeah. So it's like a search engine. So like, so like the first time you were on Google. Sorry, <laughs> never have children, Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I re- yeah, you're yeah, gonna burst I, their I, bubble I, real quick. You're gonna be like, you're gonna be like, yeah, k- k- guys, Santa's not real, idiot. <laughs> I'm guys, I'm yeah, Santa. You're not the first person to advise me against procreation. I was in a ring, also like spent more than five minutes with me. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> anyone. Oh. <laughs> Uh well yeah, yeah right, here we go ahead, ahead, first scenes. Um sorry Jabril I I that is a, it is a good scene it's a good scene and great voice acting from Robert Williams like great stuff um I didn't even realize he was in this film I think this is the first time I actually like found out um and also you know who else in this is in this film Jake Thomas Matt oh from Lizzie God, McGuire yes. that always cracks yeah. me so I had that, yeah. that that generational divide thing became clear when I was watching this with Naringa and I was like you ever watch Lizzie McGuire and she's like no and I was like ah oh, man that's the kid from Lizzie McGuire and he's so good at playing a real dipshit in this movie <laughs> yes. yeah you you really you really don't like his character um I'll go with David finding all the other Davids um, because he just his his whole world just kind of shatters and this kind of this bleaker tone that happens towards the end where there's like the sense of dread and despair and almost a suicidal kind of feeling almost comes to him when he's and he does I mean essentially he he goes on top of the the, the ledge and he just jumps and I'm like dude that robot just killed himself because. I know, no, that this he is was meant to be a family movie as well. <laughs> this is meant to be like a kid's film, and I this kid just yeah. straight up suicided because he realized... <laughs> yeah, that's f- that's fucking crazy, isn't it? I'm like, holy yeah. fuck, this is dark. I'm like, he just looked at all his other selves and, and was I mean, like, this, what's it, the point of living? That, that scene Jones, when he discovers all like, the Davids, I mean, you could read into that so much. It's... Because it's 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 a, the creation. It's yeah. it's man yeah, almost yeah. having an opportunity to confront its creator, and realizing that it's not unique. It's not special, mm. and that's a process that I think all children kind of have to go through, right? Where you realize you're not, you're not, you're not yeah. a, spe- a completely unique well, special not. snowflake that you're actually sharing a lot of the same experiences with everyone else that's lived. Yeah, it can. It's a. It's a. It's both a crushing and a beautiful experience, depending on how you you know take it but also yeah we we were fortunate to be given loves love from our mothers right i hope uh and you know our mother saying like you're unique you're special blah 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 and then you know coming to realization that that's that's no longer the case and i feel like david goes through that right like he wants nothing more than the love of his mother and to be treated you know to be treated with love and care and to be told he's special blah 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 and then to have that thrown at you and then you know again like beautiful performance from from Haley um my boy Haley but yeah he <laughs> he he he's he's incredible and the fact that he was what how old was he T- 10? 10 um yeah it's 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 really incredible so and that scene is kind of the i don't know it's it's is the climactic kind of s- character driven piece where you come to the end of his of his journey as fu- as fully realized and then you know and then it's the and then it's the next segment underwater but yeah i thought that was really powerful yeah. this time and around. i i, I kind of I, I always liked when um william hurt showed up as well just because i even though as, as a person yeah. it seems like he had a lot of demons but i love him as an actor um and i always love whenever he pops up in anything mm. so he was really well cast i thought um uh okay uh yeah my favorite scene um yeah, I really loved kind of what I guess picking up right after what uh what R- Raf spoke about there after the epilogue sort of of David sinking into the water um where he's in the inf- I think it's the amphibicopter with Teddy who's a great side character, great side mm. ca- Teddy. And then where he they just sort of get into the Coney Island, I think it is, and then they discover the blue fairy there. Um, I think the music's beautiful in that scene. I think just 
the the crushing mm. darkness of the idea that he sits there for two thousand years, just staring up at that visage underwater and praying that or asking her to make him a real boy. And then you have that cut to 2,000 years into the future where you realize that everything else is frozen and you have the... Where you get aliens? They're not aliens. <laughs> they're not aliens. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're not. Yeah. No, yeah, no, no, it's, right. it's right. funny. I was not. reading about this. Like, everyone thought yeah. that they were aliens and that was a big part of the confusion there at the end. But no, they're, they're super evolved mecha. So they're basic, which is why they're so fascinated with meeting David because he's effect, effectively the missing link. You know how we talk about the missing mm. link? He's like the last remnant of a, the first generation of Mecca. And so he's seen as that mm. link between mankind and Mecca. Anyway, I, I, I think it's just a great like WTF moment where you just cut to the future and you see this, this really trippy like Windows 2000 vision of the future. Um, I just kind of yeah. kind of wish they'd just end it there. But that kind of speaks to my issues with the rest of the film or what follows after yeah. that. Um, but yeah, I love that. Yeah. It's 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 dark. It's, it was probably too dark a place to end for this film, but um, I thought that was beautiful. Yeah. yeah, studio execs couldn't have that, but yeah, it was definitely definitely a power. And that's that's part of the film I think I remember the most that comes to that comes to me as most nostalgic whenever I watch this film because I'm like, damn, I remember this scene so vividly. Yeah, and Mel Street rocks up as the voice of the Blue Fairy. Yeah. Yeah. Merle, what's up? Yeah. Carl? Hella cameos. Yeah. You had uh, Chris Rock as the comedian bot. Yeah, yeah Chris in Rock. In the Flesh Fair, which yeah. uh, I, I will give a quick shout out to that. I love the hunt before the Flesh Fair. You know, where they had the, mm, the Brendan yeah. Gleeson in the um, in the moon in his hot air balloon. And they're like, moon on the rise. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's just classic Spielberg. Like, it almost didn't really belong in this film. Yeah. But it was still a cool yeah, sequence. Yeah. yeah. That was, yeah. Probably a, an ode to E.T. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah, because the moon yeah. is like Amblin's logo. It is? Yeah. 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 Favorite performance? Yeah, um, yeah performance. Uh, well, I'm going to go with Haley, just because mm. that was incredible, especially to do it at the age, at that age. Like, I mm. think probably one of the best child performances I've I've seen. Like mm. we've and we've done quite a few on this um in this uh podcast. Um but we did the the piano with uh what's her name? Anna Yes Pacon. Uh, Anna, Anna Paquin. Paquin. Uh, Paquin? Paquin? <laughs> <laughs> Anna Paquin. Um and then we did the other one, uh Boy. Is it Boy? Yes. We did. Yeah, Boy. Yeah, Taika yeah, Waititi. We did boy. uh the four hundred blows. Um and Indeed. yeah, I think this this performance sits up there with with um, those child performances. Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah they were for amazing. Sure. Yeah, and especially like kind of like what we said and with Wajda? Arnold. Oh, Wajda, yeah, yeah, Wajda. Yep. That's that's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, uh, the way he acted like in this, like as a robot, mech, cyborg, whatever you want to call it. Um, he did a really, really good job on this one. Like, it really reminded me of the classic cyborg kind of thing. Mm. Like, I don't know. It reminded me a lot of, like, Data from Star Trek, if anybody knows that classic <laughs> character from TV. Um, just a very, like, animatronic, mm. like, mm. yeah, it's especially a small world it's, after yeah. all, but, like, well-oiled. I don't know. Yeah. Especially the beginning yep. when he's definitely a lot more like, you know, less conscious, less self-aware. Yeah. You know, there's less of the, the human qualities haven't seeped in yet. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think that um, it's a good shout out to really good visual effects or special effects aiding a performance. Because I read that um, somewhere that they used post-production effects to um, sort of like cut out his breathing in his performance mm, yeah so if you look yeah. back he never <laughs> breathes or i think blinks yeah and blinks and it just as works well, yeah in perfect he only tandem blinks with at the, the end of the movie yeah none of the none of the ai characters or or robotic characters blink actually uh because the yeah. person i'm going to give it to for my turn is jude law um yeah. i thought jude law was exceptional i thought he 
completely embodied, uh, I guess, a robotic character, a cyborg. And he kind of does, he kind of evolved what Arnold Schwarzenegger started with in The Terminator and made it m- even more humanistic. But with all yeah. the staccato kind of suave movements, it was almost like he was dancing on screen. I was like, he, he was is kind so... Of like Jack Sparrow. Like, he reminded me of Jack Sparrow, and I can imagine Johnny Depp, like, looking at this character to try and, like, do some yeah. of the Jack Sparrow stuff. Well, that, it, it was really familiar. Yeah, yeah it's, it's funny you say that because it feels like Jack Sparrow, except, like, Jack Sparrow is more, like, let's say spaghetti-ish with his, like, you know, yeah, quality. Yeah, more alcohol. Whereas, <laughs> whereas you know... Rub. Yeah, the rum. But, yeah, no, I thought Jude Law was so inch perfect, so precise, so meticulous with everything he was doing. It was so – I don't know how – if he rehearsed to the t- to, you know to the ninth degree or if it was, like, something that was spontaneous as well as being meticulous and detailed. But that man was quite flawless with, with what he gave as um, – oh, I forgot his character's name now. Gigolo uh, Joe. As Gigolo, Gigolo Joe. Gigolo Joe, man. Yeah, Gigolo what do you know? character name. <laughs> Yeah, he was kind of. Yeah, what he, do you know, Gigolo Joe? He was kind of like a like Fred Astaire or something, you know, in his in the the style of his performance, the way not just the way he danced, but also, like you said, his movements were so perfect and choreographed. Mm. Um, yeah, I agree. It was a great performance. Um, well, yeah. yeah, I mean, those were. Gosh, it's hard to say. Um, I guess I'll. You know what? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll go with William Hurt then. I don't think he was given a ton mm. to do in this film, but I really like him as an actor. Um, and I thought that bit where he um, where he meets David at the end and then there and David confronts him and he says, I thought I was one of a kind. And he says, my son was one of a kind. And he sort of misses a beat there. And at that point, you realize that David was modeled after his son, who presumably passed away. Um, yeah. yeah. So I thought he brought a lot to what could have been a, a pretty thin part. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. True. There are no small parts, especially not for William Hurt. No, definitely. And Brendan Gleeson as well. I, f- I did not know he was in this yeah. film. He's basically like Mad-Eye Moody. <laughs> but yeah, it's exactly the same character. <laughs> but working at like some... I love like the band that was playing at the Flesh Fair was like fucking like Limp Bizkit yeah. or, li- or like Creed or something. It, uh, no, it's it's a really famous no. band that yeah, it is. Um, it's, uh, uh, Spielberger, Stanley Kubrick loves. Um, I think they're called Machine or... Something like that. Yeah, it, I think uh, the fact called? was that Steven Spielberg put that band in the film t- as an ode for Stanley Kubrick. No way. Okay, yeah, so Stanley Kubrick was, loved that band. Yeah, it was right. like his yeah. favorite band yeah. or something. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Stanley yeah. Kubrick loves the, like new metal? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, apparently. Weirdly, I guess. Yeah, that was his favorite band at the time. But he was a weird guy, right? Like he loved, uh, what would you say his favorite movie was? Oh, um, White Man Can't Jump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I guess you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wait, we have to n- find out the name of that band now. Maybe someone can Google it in the background. I think it's called Machine. Wait, let me let me. One oh, second. Ministry. Um, I'm gonna check it out right now. Ministry. Oh, I've never heard of this band. Do you go. guys know this band? Yeah, Ministry. I nope. do not. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's well. the end of that conversation. That's the end that's of that. that. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Favorite quote. <laughs> Jabril. Favorite quote. Who wants to go first? Not me. Uh, <laughs> Not me. I mean, I've got... Um, no, I've, I've actually I, got quite a lot written down. I've got a monologue that I've prepared, but that's kind of usually Raph's shtick. So yeah, I'll let Raph go your, first. Yeah. Last episode as well, you kind of gave like a whole scene. Now you're giving a whole monologue. What are you trying to do, bro? Are you trying to be me? Um, I can never be you. <laughs> I wanted to... I wanted to uh, kind of give a mention before I say my favorite quote to something that I, I, I realized uh, upon looking at my notes now that this really did penetrate me as like as striking, uh, especially when I was a kid. But is the sense of existential dread or like dying? Because I think that's why the movie, this movie, really scarred me as a kid because the idea of death surrounding David scared him as well. And like when he asks his mom, you know, do will I die or will you die? I think that's why as a kid I was like, fuck, this movie fucks me up because the idea of death was very strong when I watched this film and very strong yeah. surrounding my parents' death as well. I was just worried about death all over, my friends, my parents. Blah, blah. And this movie really presents that. So, yeah, I just wanted to like kind of add that in because I just saw it in my notes and I was like, that's why this movie tripped me out. 
<clears throat> but favorite quote. Um, I believe it's from Jude Law from uh, Gigolo Joe. They made us too fast, too smart, and too many. And I think that speaks to a lot of what's going on with you know technology and AI. And I think of what's to come is they are making they are they are doing it too fast and we are we are seeing it happening too fast and it's gonna they're gonna be too smart and yeah there'll probably be too many as well and that's literally it's literally a cautionary kind of line too that speaks to the film yeah no that's 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 true i that's a great line actually um uh okay i'll i'll, I'll try and get but on, it quick on to you yeah on to you um okay <clears throat> i'm gonna try and do my best ben kingsley who plays the narrator slash the specialist. And David continued to pray to the blue fairy there before him, she who smiled softly forever, she who welcomed forever. Eventually, the floodlights dimmed and died, but David could still see her plainly by day, and he still addressed her in hope. He prayed until all the sea anemones had shriveled and died. He prayed as the ocean froze and the ice encased the caged amphibicopter and the blue fairy too locking them together where we could still make her out a blue ghost in ice always there always smiling always awaiting him mm. shivers shivers mm. jabril that's a very fantastic mm. band ben kingsley thank you so wait why did you choose that i just love that i, I mean i love that um that whole narration in that scene mm. um i again mm. i love that ending um i just wish they had ended yeah. the movie there with him just staring at the blue fairy mm. and then mm. cut to black perhaps and just like it, or they said he stayed there for two thousand years until he was finally you know unearthed or something mm. Mm. i think it would have been incredibly sad but yeah i think it would have been a better more ending. powerful maybe yeah. yeah for sure well f- mine's a very simple line um it's the moment where uh the pirates or whatever the moon what were they moon called? raiders uh, the i don't know what they were called from that moon blimp thing and uh david's holding on to his teddy and the teddy is like i'll break david and then he falls yeah down and i thought that was just like so i remember watching that, i was like no don't don't let go special shout out uh, to that teddy yo that teddy yeah rocked yeah. i love how they gave the teddy like, it was the least um, teddy like voice as well it kind of made him even exactly. cuter, I think. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Made him like a cranky old man. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah it's so funny. Also, um, um, not CGI. Not a CGI character. No. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, another Spielberg kind of thing. Wizardry. Yeah. Wizardry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, armchair moment. Um, I think I would. I think I. I'm kind of the same as Ollie. Um, I'm in the same boat. That last bit, I think it was a shitty version of what Kubrick did at the end of Space Odyssey. And it just was kind of just like a shitty version of that. It was like weird. It was trying to be Kubrick, but be Steven Spielberg at the same time. And it was just unnecessary, in my opinion. Like, I I think it also should have ended like just Fate to Black with the Blue Fairy or... I don't know, some credit sequence or not even like sp- go to like a different character or something or like have the narrate the narrator say some things other than have that like long bit at the end. But yeah, I don't know. W- what are your guys' thoughts? Yeah, I agree. I think, I think the ending definitely stretches it far too thin. Um, there's definitely a better ending in there. And I think we, we mentioned the better ending that we want to see. I think for me, it's just the imbalance that this movie has. It never quite leans into one or the other. It just kind of presents both, and it doesn't really make it a decision. <clears throat> and I think that that big that that's probably due to the fact that it's a script that's um, that was unfinished or that belonged to someone else, and then the idea was served to Spielberg to take it up, and then he did it to honor his friend. And so it it, it was never maybe a, a film that was. It had the skeletons, but it's 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 maybe something that was not thought of um, with the utmost kind of detail. It just kind of has it presents two films into one. It's it it definitely has an identity crisis. Um, 
which is hard because when you see a Steven Spielberg film, you kind of know what it is. And then when you see a Kubrick film, you kind of, you, you get two feelings and that can like tear you up a little bit as an audience member. Um, especially yeah. because Spielberg with his kind of optimism, again, with his optimism and his warm heartedness and his light and his positivity doesn't really work with something as bleak and as dark and as kind of morbid as, uh as the subject matter is so it really it just doesn't yeah it's uneven uneven yeah 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 i would yeah i think you you've heard a lot of my complaints already so i don't need to spend too much time on it but i think even if i think the ending actually is kind of really interesting what they're talking about with the super evolved mecca and the recreating the one day and sort of letting david finally sleep or go die essentially whatever that might be mm. or the idea that he can sort of pull his mother out of time and spend one day with her but i just feel like that scene where he sits da- the alien sits or oh, not the alien sorry <laughs> the the specialist sits down with david and like explains everything to him and then did you just take a step back and think this is ludicrous why is this why is this <laughs> yeah. super mecha even talk they don't even they're not even supposed to talk where is the sound coming yeah. from and like yeah. i just felt like it just tried to literalize everything like i felt you could have done that all without dialogue and it would have almost worked as like yep. in a tr- as a dream fever or something in like a mm. very p- poetic um or or perhaps uh elliptical way and i that's where i agree with jabril 100 yeah. percent. i feel as though stanley kubrick i mean we'll never know but stanley kubrick I think would have probably brought more of that energy to what he brought to 2001 and the ending there and could have made it a little bit more ambiguous um, mm. because, you know, he's like, we yeah, mastered yeah. how to recreate life, but then it didn't work. They could only last one day. And it's like, why? I don't know. Reasons. <laughs> it works for the end of the script, but it makes no sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah. Also the other the the other thing that didn't quite make sense to me is why they kept David around and brought um, their kid back home. I'm like, what? You got your kid. He's fine. He's all nursed up. <laughs> he's he's all just killed David. He's already imprinted yeah, on the I'm mother. Like, um, it's true. He's that that imprinting thing also doesn't. I mean, like, um, it just doesn't make sense that they would bring their their child, which they have like mourned for and hoped that to bring him back to like you know to make sure that he's fine, and then they do, and they're like, "Fuck it, let's just keep David around," Fuck it. <laughs> because let's torture ourselves. Yeah, and, I mean, and torture I, them both. Like, what a poor decision. I, I mean, that's 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 I guess the the. Um, yes, yeah, it's, ins- it's like kind of the idea of the film. It's the inception of the film. Yeah, but like, w- without <laughs> yeah. it, it wouldn't it's exist. Like, I'm just... Is it a human or not? Yeah, yeah. So like, if you had a little robotic baby and like, you're just like, fuck that shit. Throw it off the <laughs> just stab it. <laughs> throw it off. Fuck the it. Roof. Throw it in <laughs> well, the like, river. I'm honestly, like my real. The, my ver- <laughs> the mother should have just taken him to the factory or wherever the headquarters to be yeah. decommissioned. Because I know she's like they'll they'll. You know they'll they'll destroy you. They'll end your life. But like, is it really better than just letting him wander the world without any family and then get like, picked up by like a flesh fair and like yeah. well, almost torn exactly. apart for human it's... beings like enjoyment? I mean, it probably would have been better if they just like flicked the off switch behind him, right? Yeah, yeah. It's funny she says all that, and then literally moments later, he gets hunted by like, I know <laughs> yeah. humans that hate machines. I'm like. Mm. I don't think she liked him that much. I don't think she actually loved him at all. I yeah. Think. No. I don't think so kind of, kind of, uh, mom's kind of a bitch. Your mom's kind yeah. of a bitch, David. <laughs> Mom! And and she introduces him to the real son and then se- like loves the real son in front of him. I'm like, your mom's yeah. fucked up, David. She didn't want like, him, like, though, to she be was fair. The, it was book. Just the, the dad that just like signed up to this without consulting his wife. But... Yeah, and then and yeah. then the mom wants David more than the dad does. The dad's like, I don't give a fuck about this thing. <laughs> yeah. What kind of shitty dad is that as well? <laughs> yeah, yeah, such a shitty yeah, idea, dad. This present, this present that you don't even want. I mean, generally the message it's of such... this movie is probably like human beings are trash. And the parents yeah. epitomize that completely. For sure. Poor yeah. poor judgments, poor decisions. God, don't... Or well, the moral of the story, don't have kids. Yeah, don't have kids. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. And uh, bonus question then. 
do you want to have kids? Um, <laughs> well, um, we know that we know that Ollie, you know, <laughs> is being told not to procreate. So <laughs> I don't think we want that to happen. Um, no. I do not want kids. Um, and uh, Jabril, you might be the only one that does want a little Habibi. Yeah, no, I, I, I little, if little. we're, are we do, are we actually having a serious little question? About? <laughs> no, no, this is not the question. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is because I answered it for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, the question is, um, if you were to be a mecca, what what would your purpose be? You know, like, would you be a gigolo Joe? Would you be mm. a search engine? Would you be what what kind of mecca would you be? What do you think your purpose would be in this? If someone were to create you, what do you think? Yeah. Mm. Um, can I uh, can I venture an answer first? I would be the yeah, yeah. the life of the party, Otron, three thousand. So by that I mean, <laughs> if there are awkward silences or there's a little bit of a dry spell at your gathering, at your dinner party, at your office party, I'm just there to kind of like make conversation. <laughs> Or like ask people about how their day went, or crack jokes, or like, I'm like, you know, to pick up the vibe, basically, you know. <laughs> I think that would be my uh, that would be my purpose. <laughs> Love that. You could have thought of a, a better name. Life of the basically party, Otron like is great. Martini. What are you talking about? Life of the party, <laughs> <laughs> or the party starter? I just play like the Will Smith song, the party starter. Yo, yeah. I'm the party starter. We ain't got a party starter till the part is gone. Do- People would have you for like five minutes and be like, fuck me. Okay, turn it. Th- th- yeah. turn no, this no, thing no. But that's the thing. That's the <laughs> genius about the genius about this robot is that I sense when my pro- people are tired of me. And then I just like walk away or I just like stare and or like I go off and stare into the distance yeah. and like disappear. No, yeah. It, because you're not that evolved yet. You don't really know what to do with yourself. So you just like kind of go into a corner. <laughs> yeah, I just and like, like stare like, at every you stare at everyone from a corner or I just <laughs> act like, like a then, bot <laughs> or I act like a bot that yeah. is like stuck so I'm just like jumping against the wall in the corner <laughs> yeah like a Roomba yeah just no like it'd be like you'd be like really door. creepy just like in the corner staring at people like this yeah <laughs> just do like and this then whenever people stare. want to hit <laughs> yeah <laughs> when people like hail you you're like <laughs> Hi. <laughs> 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 yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. good. I like that. Um, I think I would be like, like, uh, I guess if, if I don't know, even I want to give it a name as well, like fit fitness instructing <laughs> three thousand or something, <laughs> where like basically I'm like the best of the very best for football, for rugby, for I'm like, I have nailed down all this human sports and I'm literally the best. So I've become like this coach, this guru who trains only the best people, only the best human players. Yes. I'd, I'd be called like that. Zenith 9,000. <laughs> Zenith 9,000. <laughs> nice. Milner Tron. <laughs> yeah. Milner Tron. <laughs> or uh, a Um, yeah, I think I was I was I'd say similar to Ollie, I'd be like a like a DJ kind of thing, but like oh. I have like eight arms and I could like mix like eight different tracks, kind of like a jukebox, sick. but like just like you, the futuristic jukebox. <laughs> you'd be like what Daft Punk wants to be. Mm. Yeah, I swear there was there was a Daft Punk kind of like in Tron. I think Daft Punk were in Tron. Yeah, they were. They were. They yeah. even scored it. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. It'll be something like that. Nice. Yeah. yeah good that's chance. sick. Good right. answers. Good question. Yeah. Knocked good it question. out of the park. Nice. Oh, well, yeah. Three times in a row. Uh, <laughs> woo. All right. Well, shall we give this a rating? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go first? Well, uh, who wants to? <laughs> it's the classic Jabril, like, let's give this a rating. Not me. Not it. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can no, go No, 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 no. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. No, no. It's fine. <coughs> oh, okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give this 7.5 uh, ca- uh, cannonball 
um, was it? It was a cannonball, right? Like I guess robot mecha ball thing, explosion things out of ten. <laughs> yeah, so smooth. <laughs> I don't know what the, the <laughs> thing was called. No, nobody. I don't want to say Chris kno- Rocks. Yeah. <laughs> nobody knows what it means, but it's provocative. Um, it's a little cannonball slingshot thing. Cannonball. Um, I will give it eight. Oh, this is kind of hard. I will give it. Fuck it. I'm gonna give it eight. Um, turn. M- Fuck, this is not smooth either. <laughs> God, I'm having a stroke. Um, I'm going to give it eight turned off Davids out of ten. Nice. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, this feels probably a bit harsh, but I'm going quite low for this one. I'm going to give this five and Fibicopters out of ten. I just feel like this Ooh. film didn't work. It didn't work for me. And I'm annoyed because it could have been great. But, um, yeah. But yeah. Sorry, yeah, Stevie. It should get remade. I think it would do well to have a remake. Yeah, actually, I agree. I agree. Yeah. As like a as a mini series, we'll see it as yeah, a mini series. Definitely. Mm. HBO it's should pick it up. Just all of it is set inside the amphibicopter for those two thousand years underwater. <laughs> <laughs> do you think Teddy, when he saw this happen, he was just like, "Fuck, Fuck he's, me. Not, he's not allowed. He's, he can't go anywhere." <laughs> and, he, and he's just there, and David's like. Please make me a real boy. And he's like, this is gonna be long. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think he like pulls? Do you think? He, off. Yeah. Can I kill myself? Did, did my career yeah, did give me that option? <laughs> uh, he probably suicided. Yeah. He's like, fuck, kill me. <laughs> imagine, imagine for two thousand years <laughs> hearing, please, please make me a real boy, please. <laughs> he's he's like, like, oh my god. <laughs> fuck, get shut up. <laughs> Yeah. And the thing, ro- robots can't go crazy, so he just has to listen to him. He just yeah, because like, yeah. I think one of his last lines, he's like, "David, we're we're stuck." And you can hear him be like, "Please, yeah, God, <laughs> get out of here!" <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he's like, "Oh, I we, think that's uh, the- <laughs> dude." I think that's like that's hell. That that is a version. That of would hell. actually be hell. <laughs> This kid yeah. has no chat. <laughs> You've stuck with him for the rest of the movie. <laughs> You're underwater. <laughs> it's cold. Oh, God. It's cold. It's cold. It's freezing. It's dark. <laughs> oh, boy. And yeah, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment. Give us a five-star rating. Do all that jazz. Share it with your friends, with your family. Share it with the world. And uh, yeah, this is the last episode of this theme. And we're going to be taking a bit of a break. Because we've got some big things in the works, uh, big things coming to you, um, and yeah, we'll make some announcements about that soon. Um, follow us on Instagram because that's the best place to find those announcements. And yeah, ciao, ciao, for now, my people. Love you all.